I'm Jodie Rushton Rad. I am an artist and a writer, and I was invited to Josephine Butler College to be in residence for a year. And the idea was to work with students on a few different creative projects. We're creating a garden here. What it's going to be is there's going to be like a little piece of everyone who's involved with it. And I thought if you do something that's growing, then it's kind of there forever. This project was inspired by um, my connection with my own allotment. All the plants came from people that I knew. Around about the time I got my allotment in Nottingham, uh, my nana died. And one of the first things I did, because we've got this massive family, and so everybody, you know, while everybody's sort of recovering from the grief, everybody descends on the house and everybody wants like a memento from the house to take. So I just went in the garden and dug up some plants because they hadn't been in their garden for years. They'd sort of let it be a bit abandoned. But I thought, well, if I take a, a plant from my Nana's house and I ended up taking a few and then I grow it, then it, it's sort of like a, it's like a lives forever kind of thing. So this garden is here is going to be populated by cuttings from that plant. So it's going to carry on again. So it's gone from Hull to Nottingham to Durham, which is how my life's gone. And the students are going to be putting plants in here that mean something to them. And the idea is that I hope if this garden lasts, maybe it will be demolished in a year. Maybe it will still be here in 10 years because the grounds people kind of forgotten about it or they don't know what to do with it. And because this is sort of a public area where people come on walks, I really like the idea that um, if people want to, they can come and take a cutting and take it to their house. And because people in Durham especially are from all over the country, I um, just really love the idea of getting some sort of eternalness if then they can take a cutting and then take it back to, I don't know, London and start growing it there. In my youngest hours. In my youngest hours, I feel the chattering heat push my strides to the rock garden where I concoct curious potions of plums and leaves, curate my castles of mud as those little red wellies stomp, create craters of dampened grass, discover the weight of a watering can as I tumble against the bubbly solitudes of growing untiered. Middays are a mumma of green and blue. Of stems, shaking hands, and staring sunflowers square in the eyes, they touch the glass of my bedroom window. Dirt stained fingernails in long summers stretch beyond and plop into grand's honey and lemon. To the source throat in mid August. When I left, I promised not to forget to take a chance between those gentle weeks, to breathe grieving bluebells of May. Will my old values be fashioned tightly, embracing brick? where her winding wisteria still lovers and wilts. The learning felt as I knelt and still kneel on that cracked step, being reminded to get the benefit on the way out. Told to take arms in the kindness of pity, protruding from moon seeds, we watch grow together. I still cherry pick your habits. I always will. The wisteria is it's a plant that grows on my, in my grand's garden. And it's like we've got a chalice beside the, um, like this white door, and it goes into the kitchen. And there's like the crack step that's like just going up to it. So it's just like a really, like it's just a place that it's just really like an everyday place in my life. But it's somewhere that I've got lots of memories of being like a kid and like filling up like what like squishy water bottles to like have water fights or sitting and having like a drink in the summer um, or like not feeling well but it being like warm um, and my grand handed out like a drink from the kitchen. I get quite hung up in that kind of um, trying to make a mark thing and like I, it's something that I really need to improve with myself is getting around the fact that I'm not always going to be um, remembered and I'm not always gonna yeah there's not always gonna be a, a statement or something to leave behind wherever I go um, 
and it's it's strange because going back um, so I've just kind of spent my last term back at home and like spending that back at home and then coming back to a place and being like um, things have moved on without me and things have happened here um, and then coming back now um, over Easter and realising that things are mostly the same here but lots of things changed while I wasn't and it had nothing to do with me and that will happen um, with this garden um, once I go and like in 10 years from now like you say. I'm really aware that as an artist you you make pieces of work, you make, it might be a sculpture or it might be a film like this or something and then eventually it just kind of disappears. So I thought that like a, to make a physical outdoor space would be a way of like having some permanency in a way of not just my time here but my whole life on earth, not to be too mystical about it. And so I wanted to bring the students in because they are even more transient than me, really, because they are only here for a really short space of time. They're here just in, on this site. They're just here from like the start of the first term to the exam period, and then they disappear. And what's weird is a new set of students comes in every year to stay in their bedrooms, and they sort of recreate kind of the same experience. I'm Millie Stott and this is Bones. I love people who cry in restaurants, who are sick at the sight of blood, who lie through their teeth in the face of danger. This raw humanness, the lifting of the skin, the agony, the waning of the open wound. Who have palms wet with sweat when they speak in public. Spots oozing with yellow juice, grease and dark dyed hair who leave sticky snot imprinted on your jumper. I love people who laze about in faded underwear covered in toast crumbs who lick cracked, dry lips and absent-mindedly poke starry eyes, who feel shame and faint at the hospital, wake up past noon and lay for a long while feeling the sun's face. I like writing about things which are disgusting. Like, I kind of like writing about things which people don't write about, like kind of not necessarily poetic language, stuff which is, um, just, I get, I guess, a bit more free in things that you can't really talk about, like, you know, like spots and grief and stuff. That's kind of what it is to be a student. It's not like flowery, it's kind of like bodily fluids and like just being a bit drunk and disgusting. And that's kind of what I wanted to leave behind, that people know that's okay to be like that. Um, is there anything that you would say to anybody who is going to be living in your room? Um, I guess it's okay to feel like you've messed everything up and you can start again and rebuild. Another thing about it as well is the, uh, the wasted labour element of this concept. Um, I think that you can feel like this about uni anyway and your time at uni. It's a long time, three years. and. A lot of people, you know, you, you just doing that, you're getting the certificate afterwards and you're kind of done. Um, it's really strange to think that you put in all of this effort for that one thing and you do that as an artist as well um, and then you do that with your family and you do that with all the relationships you have. So I created all of these poems. I wrote so many different things while I've been here and they just didn't some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them just didn't seem right to have engraved on these plaques. Um, but I was doing all sorts of stuff, so I was cutting them out of paper, the whole poem. I was pressing them into clay, I was making clay shapes out of them. Um, and then I just jumbled them all together. And they're now buried in the garden. Um, and that's just like another addition to the idea that you've created something that is not necessarily going to last. It doesn't need to, but it will be there in some form. My name is L.D. Mist, and I'm going to read my poem, Ghosts. Apparitions play my soul. My hands, my feet, they aren't my own. They're haunted, belonging to these ghosts. 
of what I was, of what I left. Memories, whispers of many shades, walk my path of present days. Yet on I walk through life unknown, for I too will die and become my days. The cage by the end of this summer will be filled with all of the things that students always leave behind. And I like that idea because when students move out of these halls, they always leave some stuff that they don't want. And it's not just rubbish, but it's things. It might be like textbooks, it might be sometimes just pots and pans and stuff like that, but things they're done with. Um, and I wanted the, um, we're gonna lock the cage, and I wanted that to be like a sort of forever symbol of this year, which has been a particularly strange year. And it'd be representative of everyone, and there's gonna be bits of mine in there too. I'm Greg Walsh. I composed and played the sound piece Spatial Echoes, which accompanies this film. In the creation of the sound piece, I used a space echo, which is an old tape delay unit that has tape running through it. And that tape captures the sound you put in and replicates it. But it's analog, not digital, as effectively we are as human beings. So the replications become imperfect. The replications become approximations of the original in the way that our own recollections do. They grow fainter despite trying to hold on. They change and can't perfectly recall the original. I wanted it to feel very human so I didn't loop anything and whatever you hear is played by me for the entire duration of the piece. And what you learn from doing things that way is that despite at times feeling frustrated and disheartened, it isn't actually wasted labour. Because even though there are far easier ways of doing it, it's that sheer effort and that struggle and that honesty that connects you so deeply with the work and gives it real meaning. I really like the idea that as an artist it's really difficult to think how you can create any kind of legacy and I thought the best legacy ever is something that is living and growing. It's also, even though there's not a huge structure of the garden, it took so much work that it is take somebody a lot more work to try and get rid of it, so that's another good point. But I hope that, who knows what will happen, but I really like the idea that 10 years in the future, there will still be the remnants of this garden there and there will probably be these posts with the poem Maybe they'll have like collapsed or rotted in the ground and they'd be like half there, half not. Maybe the poems washed away. Probably everything around it will be overgrown so you can just see a couple of flowers shooting up amongst all of these weeds. That's the rest of the, the meadow or the bracken or whatever it is. Um, and it will be like this echo of some people that were here and some things that once was here. People always seem to ask, so how long are you going to last? An abandoned garden of slow beating reverb here lies, a macabre facade of sparkling, all consuming time. So, is there any freedom in your future if you're pulling back to the past? Well, it's 10 years since I was here, and what do I think? That I tried so hard just so that I wouldn't sink. To ensure I gasp just above the water. It wiped out all of my emotional resource. So now I'm 10 years older. If not for this, what did I do it for? Some might say that I frittered away all those life, career, family building years, all of that precious, finite and needed time, but they are wrong because every drop was mine. If I could get one message to that familiar friend I now barely know, it'd be there's so much more to this, just watch it slowly grow.